Hello guys, I'm Superon. Welcome back to the channel and we're carrying on with the Zafira from the last episode. You saw I had to pull out my fully rebuilt engine because we had a knocking on the bottom end. It came out nice and easily on the trolley and then I could separate it, flip it over and take the crankshaft out without taking any of the other parts of the engine off. So we've left the engine fully complete, just managed to take the sump off, take the camber off and get the crankshaft out. Looking at the crank, still visually there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with it. But what's happened is the big ends have worn a bit oval, which has knocked the new shell straight out. So as I had two donut engines, I had two crankshafts and I did use the best one of the two. Obviously it now seems that wasn't good enough. So what I did is took the other crankshaft off to the machine shop to get it reground. Now all the other machine work we've had done here for all my engines has always been done at Coltec, but unfortunately they can't do crankshaft at the moment. I went to Scholar Engines and took my crank to them and they said, yeah, that'll be no problem to regrind it. And they turned it round really quickly. I also asked them to supply the bearings so then I knew everything would be perfectly matched for when it all goes back together. So let's unwrap the shiny new crank. So here is the other crank, all machined up. They actually had to undersize it. So it's had a full reground, so now everything is perfectly true. They went 0.25 millimeters under and got the new bearings to match. And that's what it says there, 0.25 millimeters reground. So we'll get this one all cleaned up, get all the oil waves blown out, flush everything through, and then we're ready for assembly. And the other thing, I couldn't get any standard oversized bearings. So we've got ACL race bearings to go in it now. Nice little upgrade. That's the new crank. Cleaned up spotless. Got all the oilways blown out. All the journals degreased, spotless off. And still, compared to the old one, this is the one that's got all the problems. And it doesn't look horrendous. Even look at it now. There's a new journal. There's an old journal. It must just be the shape of it, all worn. And so here's the old shells that I took out. As you can see, that's only a couple of hundred miles and it's knocked them right out. Really strange, I haven't seen anything like this before. It wasn't an oil pressure problem, perfect oil pressure. The mains are all fine. They've all bedded in perfectly. Just the con rods. And I just had to have a little Google. This is what new bearings look like usually. Like the silver colour. Just like that. Got the new ACL race bearings out. And it looks like they've been used already. They've got heat marks all over them. Look on the backs. It's what they're normally like. This is what the new race bearings are like. These ones are like copper lined or copper coated. It is weird, but I've just Googled it and all the searches say, don't panic. That is just the coating of these high performance bearings. Just weird. So everything's cleaned up. Got the block all cleaned up. Let's get the crank back in its new home. The new bearings in, see all the holes line up with the oilways and in the rods as well. Now we can put the crank in. And for all the gaskets, of course, I went to Nevlock. I spoke to Jordan and he got it out on express delivery. He even addresses it out to Super Rod now, which is awesome. Uh, we've got lots of goodies. Pens, key rings, Nevlock stickers, loads of bits from them. The freebies are often more exciting than the car parts. And the gasket set and the sealer for the caps. So at the minute I'm going to need this rear main oil seal to get the crank on. So let's carry on. Thank you. 
and all in and torqued up. They're 25 newton meters, 30 degrees, 15 degrees. And we're all in there and happy. So we'll line these up flat again, because you can just move them. So we'll get this, all my timing marks lined up. Before I put the sump on, I think I'll put the oil pump and the cam belt back on. So then I'll know that we're all timed up good. New gasket. There's the oil pump back on. Someone on the original build noticed that I hadn't quite lined these up properly. So on these ones, I made sure we are super flush. So now to get the cam belt back on, get this timed up. And that's the cam belt back on, upside down, which is a bit weird to do. But when I took it all apart, I couldn't set it to top dead center. Otherwise, number one piston and rod would be all the way down and I wouldn't have been able to get to it. So I set the crank up flat, which meant I didn't have any timing marks. So I put my own timing marks on and I've got them lined up. Got those two teeth and my one at the top because the real timing marks are here, here and here. So we're only just slightly after top dead center. So I'm happy we're all lined up to how it came out. So let's see if we can get real top dead center timing marks. And we are bang on. Got this one, this one, and this one. And now my timing marks are here and here. So when the next person does the cam belt, they're gonna wonder what these are. No valves here. So now I'm happy we can put the sump back on. And here's the balancer shaft girdle that we took the balancer shafts out of in a previous episode. So we've got rid of them and this can go back on. <laughs> That's the girdle all on and torqued up. Oil pickup all on and torqued up. Oil cooler lines back on. So let's get the sump on. Sump bolt and a new genuine filter. All sealed up and we've succeeded. All back together and we didn't have to break the rest of the engine. So I've left the whole rest of the engine all together just managed to do it all in the sump, which is great news. Got no bits left over. It's got the old seals, got all new bits of them. I put the other oil level sensor in because that's leaking out of here, out of the plug itself. So there must be a little crack or something. So that's got the other one in. New copper washers for the oil cooler, new seal for the sump pickup, new filter and bearings. And we are all back together. So I'm gonna leave this upside down overnight just for all the sealer and everything to go off. So it's not submerged in oil. But the other job that we noticed last time is when I pressure washed the gearbox off originally, must have had a little bit of water left in it because when I went to take the drive shaft out, you see, got a bit of milkshake in there. So I'm just gonna drain that out. I've got new oil to go in. So let's get that off and get that emptied. So that's the gearbox oil all out. So there must have been just a little bit of water left in there from when I pressure washed it up and it's just made the new oil go a little bit milky. So I'll get new oil for that. But while it's off, I've just noticed here, the rear subframe bush is not doing a lot. And I noticed this one can spin as well. So that's on its way out. All the rest are in there tight. They're all right, but yeah, this one and this one definitely got a problem. So when I went down to Motor Parts Direct, I spoke to Rob to get some new gearbox oil and got a full set of subframe bushes as well. So we'll press them in and then we can reassemble. Looks like it's just a little collar. Just got to press out, pop the new ones in. I remember I had this bush push kit for Vectra rose joints on the back and that worked perfectly. So we've got a new joint in with no problems at all. So let's get the others done. It's number six all in. So they all come out really easy. I thought they might be a bit of a pain, but with a gun on that extractor set, they buzzed right in. I didn't want to start smashing it with sledgehammers and that because I'm all set up on this trolley exactly at the angle that I want it when it goes back in. So I didn't really want to move it off here. So all six subframe bushes replaced. We can now flip the engine back over, put the clutch and flywheel back on, put the box back on, and put it back in the car.
and we're all back assembled on the subframe again. Got it bolted in on the front and rear mounts, got all the drive shafts in, put all the oils back on, got intermediate shaft back on, and just checked and retimed it up. Now it's the right way up, but that was all perfect. So everything's lined up, tensioned up, so the covers can go back on there. The only thing I've noticed as I've been sitting here is the turbo's full of oil. But I know what that is. It's because we had the engine upside down. So when I put all the oil on the crank, when we're the other way up, it all sat on the bottom of the pistons. So it's just gone into the combustion chamber. And then now we've turned it the other way up again. Some have just come off the top of the head and out. So that'll burn off. Just might be a bit smoky on startup. But I know beforehand the turbo had no smoking issues. The engine had no smoking issues. So once that's cleared, we'll be all back to normal. So I'll stick these covers back on and then we can slide it back under. And we're all in place. The trolley's lined up with the subframe. The engine's sitting lower in there. And then at Auto Shack, what we did is let the car down on the ramp and that just lowered itself down onto the subframe. But here we do not have the ramp luxury. So I'm gonna lift the car up with the engine crane and lower it down, which in theory should do the same thing, but we don't have quite as much control over that thing. Hopefully it will just slot in nicely, just like it did with the ramp. And we're all back in. Back up on the stands, subframes all in. Just lifted the engine up, bolted the mounts back to the chassis. Once again, successful trip, no fatalities. And now just plug all the bits back in. Got the looms, a few pipes, a few fuel lines. Get the rad and exhaust back on. And we are gonna be ready to roll. And we are full back together. Fully committed. I haven't even tried turning it over yet. Got all the hubs on, the brakes on, the exhaust on, all the rad packs on, full of coolant, full of oil. So far, everything has stayed in the engine. Got our earth connected, those who remember last time. So before I put the plugs in, we're just gonna turn it over, build up some oil pressure, check for any leaks, and then go for a full launch. Well, you know what I said when we were good for launch? I've just noticed down here, we've got a drip. Drip coming from this metal pipe along here. Now I did notice when I went to put this one on that this was bent round. So it must've got caught up somewhere. And when I bent it back, it looks like it's put a little crack in there. So I have got another one off the other car, uh, but for now, I think I'll just try and join it up over the top because I haven't got that one here. So now we just bypass this metal one that's leaking and we go straight from here all the way around into there. So that'll get us up and running until I get the other pipe off the other one. So let's top up and turn it over. Got lights, crank sensors off. Oil light's gone off, spark plug's back in, and we'll fire it up. And we're all back together, fully assembled, spark plug's in, all the boost pipes back on. I just let it down so it's a little bit more level, so we're not sitting up like a speedboat. I'll give it one more turnover without the crank sensor on, and then we've got nothing less to do apart from try it. And I'm expecting quite a bit of smoke to come out because like we saw in the bottom of that turbo, because where the engine was upside down overnight and all the oil was sitting on the bottom of the piston and then ran through the rings into the exhaust. We might have a bit of smoke starting up, but that should soon clear. So let's go for it. Turn on the magic switch. Now we're ready. Sensor back in. So official first start. No, 
No, no, Gen. And we're alive. It's a little bit unhappy. And it's got a real big exhaust leak from that V-band. You can hear that puttering away. We'll see what that is. But we're getting a bit smoky in here. I might have to open the door. But the bottom end knocking has gone. Finally, we've solved that problem. That was the crank. So I'll let it run on for a bit. And then once it's cooled down, I'll get this V-band sorted. That's chuffing away there. Got coolant flowing nicely for our little makeshift pipe. Success! And quick as a flash, we are back on the ground. I went and got all my spares from the other Zafira, so I replaced that water pipe there. Ran it all up and it's all fine. No knocks, finally. So I'll put the bumper, put the wheels on. Do a little bit of a murmur on idle. So I might have to look into that. I might just need a little run because it's been sat for a little while. But I think we are ready for a test drive. All right, let's take this out for a test drive and see how it does. Got no lights on the dash and we're all up to temperature. Got the little back from that big air filter. I don't know how much smoke is gonna plume out the back because that exhaust was pretty full of oil when we turned the engine back over. It doesn't look too bad. Maybe when it warms up a bit. Oh, I'm so pleased to have this back. It's weird, I don't know why I like it. But I love it. So it has been a lot of hassle getting this engine back out again and then back in again. But that's all part of the fun of being back in the world of voxels. Still need to get the tracking done. The steering wheel is slightly off, but this is the subframe out of the black one. So everything's been moved around. But I just want to make sure I'm not going to take the subframe out again before I get the tracking done. But I think we have got a 10-4 on a great success. See if the cruise works. Cruise works as well. Woo. So glad to have this back. And everything's all fine under here. We haven't got a single leak. Even the sump is bone dry, which I think is a first for a Vauxhall. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this is the last time I have to touch the engine on this. It was a bit of a bummer that I had to take the engine out again. Thankfully, I've got quite a lot of equipment here and it wasn't too bad to do. Even without a lift, it all came in and out pretty easy. And I did manage to change the crank without upsetting any of the rest of the engine. So I still haven't even took the rocker cover off to do the whole crank swap. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a few hundred miles on it, flush the oil out again, new filter, new oil, and we should be good to go. This has brought back some very Vauxhall memories from the Astra days of having an awesome week and then having a month broken. Having an awesome week and then having a month broken. But hopefully this is just a one-off and we can carry on enjoying this awesome car. I can't wait to get it back out and about. And when I am 100% that we are mechanically fine, I'm gonna start on the bodywork and getting this all cleaned up. I've still got the bumpers off the black one, so we're gonna paint them up. I'm gonna get the wheels refurbed. I've got all the splash guards and everything out of the other one that are all broken on this one. So we are gonna get this factory fresh, looking absolutely mint. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. A huge thanks to Scholar Engines for doing the crank and getting the bearings. And of course, Nevlock for their super quick delivery, getting me all the gasket and everything else, which meant we could just crack on and get this back together. No waiting around. Make sure you give this video a like and make sure you tune in next time because I have still got loads of episodes to film on this Afira. And if anything else goes wrong, I'll be sure to let you know. But until next time, make sure you have fun. And we've got a few more offerings to the God of Speed. We've got the old bearings on the shelf now as well.